Hello everyone, welcome back to another watercolor tutorial. For the fall season, we're going to be painting two branches with fall leaves, or they don't have to be fall leaves, they could just be leaves. Um, but we're going to start out with the first one. You're going to grab some dark brown watercolor on your paintbrush. I'm using a size 1 by Windsor & Newton, um, linked in the description. And I'm just going to start off with painting the stem of my first one because we're going to be painting two. I can't remember if I said that already. And I penciled in just the an outline for myself. So it'll look something like that. I'm just going to fix the bottom. Perfect. And I'm going to switch paintbrushes to a double zero so that it's a little bit finer. And we're going to start painting the leaves. Actually, before I do that, just going to make this stem a tad bit darker. Okay. So, I'm going to have a leaf coming out like this, and another one going that way, and I'm going to take orange watercolor, and I'm going to mix that with a teeny bit of brown, and going to extend that stem into the leaf. And I'm going to be painting these kind of elongated uh, leaves that are going to slightly change color as they move through the leaf. So I'm going to kind of for this leaf at least, I don't know, it might change with the others, but I'm going to fade it into a yellow, brighter color here. Very nice. I'm going to just switch back to the um, size 1 paintbrush because it's probably going to be a little easier to paint the leaves. So I'm just doing the same thing for that second leaf that I painted. Again, picking up some yellow and fading it into the yellow. I very much like that yellowy gradient. I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see um, with a little bit more ease what I'm doing here. I'm picking up some more brown and I'm going to add another leaf coming from there. Switch back to my other brush. And I realize this might get a little repetitive because we're just basically painting the same technique of leaf over and over and over again. But I hope that you stick around because it might be therapeutic to watch. I know that I really enjoy painting just repetitive things because sometimes you don't want to really think what you're doing. You just want to Put your paintbrush on paper and turn your brain off and that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. So I'm just uh, adding a little bit of orange, fading that the orange into the yellow. There we go. Ooh. 
Ooh la la, I can hear thunder outside. Exciting stuff. So I'm just painting two more stems here for two more leaves. So that's, that's essentially what we're just doing. We're just painting stems that are attached to the main branch and then we're painting leaves that are attached to those stems and we're just following that same pattern with basically every single leaf. The only thing that's changing is the color of the leaves and you can you know paint it one color oh my gosh I just realized that was totally off screen um you can paint it just one color throughout that is not a problem at all um however I like to change it up since this is quite a simple painting like why not spruce it up a little bit zoomed it back out a little bit because I'm not very good at judging if the paper is on camera. Ooh, it must be absolutely pouring outside right now. I can't see because I'm in the bathroom. That's where I film. And uh, it has a, a very small window at the top. And I and painting, so I'm not going to stand up. Why don't we turn this into a sketchbook Sunday where I chat about random things because this is going to be just a lot of me painting the same thing over and over again. So it doesn't really require too much instruction. Um, but in a previous video, if I get the order of my videos correct, because I'm pre-painting quite a few at one time. Um, so if I get the order correct, you would have heard me say in a previous video that I have an event coming up. I guess you can call it that. And that is why I'm pre-painting a bunch, because I already had the whole summer pre-painted <clears throat> up until the first week of September. And I was like, oh, you know, end of August, I'll get back to it. Because I have a lot of things that keep me busy uh, in the summer. Like most people, I'm assuming. But, um, yeah, so now it's kind of a good day for this because I don't have to water the garden because it's been raining a lot, like now it's pouring probably. Again, I can't see out the window. Um, and last night it poured, so I don't need to water the garden and I weeded it recently so I don't feel guilty. There's not much to harvest right now, so 
It's a really good day to be productive inside. And, uh, okay, get to it, Julia. Just <laughs> stop rambling. Um, so basically, pretty spontaneously, I would say, we decided that we are going to fly to Europe in the fall. And like the biggest hang up, I guess, was that, um, like my garden, uh, it was challenging to figure out how we're going to do this because the fall is kind of, I, I can't go in the middle of the summer because I'm growing everything. And then in the fall, that's when you harvest everything. And, um, well, you preserve everything. So, um, a lot of things, like squash, for example, I didn't harvest until mid-October of last year. And, um, you know, I had to compromise. I had to basically pick a date that allowed me to still harvest quite a bit, as much as I could. Um, but it had to be still in the season so that it was warm enough for us to go and do the things that we wanted to do. Uh, and we're not going for as long as we would usually go for. Like usually in the past when we've gone to Europe, it was for three months or two months to do a bike trip or something like that. Um, and as much as we would love to do that, it's uh, just kind of not feasible mostly because of my garden. Uh, it's really hard to let go of all of that. Like, how do you vacation in the summer when one of your main hobbies is growing your own food? So, ooh, I don't know if you can hear that thunder. But I really hope the lights don't go out because that would really render this whole video useless. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so we are planning to go to Europe, hopefully, uh, I'm not gonna say when yet, but, um, at the end of September, oops, <laughs> well, there we go, I just spilled the beans, we're planning on going end of September around there for a little while, and, uh, <clears throat> we're just kind of waiting on some details before we make the final call but if we do go we are going to go to Italy I hope that's the plan kind of right now um, back to the Dolomites we've been there three times now or sorry two times um, and for me personally it it's just one of my favorite places it's where I met my husband uh, and then we subsequently went back there when we were on our bikes. And um, it's just a really nostalgic and beautiful, beautiful place. So we are going to go back and do some hiking, like multi-day hikes. That's the plan, at least. Um, we would have loved to take our bikes, but for the amount of time that we're going, especially since we're gonna, we like we're visiting Chris's family as well, um, it would just not be feasible. Uh, it would just for me, it would be too much stress to take the bikes. Like I've traveled quite a bit with bikes, and um, you really have to be committed uh, to to be cycling for a long time in order to justify going through all of that. That's just my opinion though. And with the way that the airports are right now in Canada, I really don't wanna be dealing with lost bikes. So <clears throat> unfortunately, biking is not in the picture, but we're still gonna be going back to Italy, hopefully. And uh, I cry just when I think about that. Italy is really one of my favorite places just 
it's so so magical the pizza the gelato like oh my gosh when i when we cycled in europe when we went in 2018 I sometimes had very, actually very frequently, cause depending on where we were, but I had like three ice creams a day. Um, sometimes from the same place, if we were uh, like, we stopped somewhere for the night and we found a really tasty place. Um, and sometimes it was in three different places. And my god, Italian ice cream is really something else entirely. Okay, just a brief intermission in my story. <clears throat> I have finished the first, uh, what do you call it? The first foliage fall foliage and I'm just going to move on to the second one here um, so it's going to be very similar this one it's just going to be a little bit more spread out I guess you could say so I'm just creating my color here with black and brown And just like with the first one, I'm going to paint the main stem on first. Anyway, to continue on with my story or to finish it off, because I'm not really sure where I'm going with it, we are planning to go to Europe. Um, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of things we still have to figure out, so I'm not getting my hopes up too high. Um, but by the time that you see this video, depending on what order I upload my videos, I will either be in Europe having the time of my life or I will be at home crying <laughs> watching this video, wishing that I was in the Alps, but we will see. We'll see where the stupid rules and regulations take us and I'm going to leave it at that. I actually quite like this kind of green when I start off with the green and then I um, blend it into like yellow or orange. It's very nice. Okay, so that is basically it. I might add a few more leaves here and there because this branch looks a little bit bare. But uh, that's it for today's fall or autumn leaf tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, click like on this video because it helps me grow my channel and I will see you in the next one.